Airbnb has changed a lot of its policies lately in 2020, which means you need to change your house rules. This will save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Let's talk about house rules on Airbnb, what house rules are, why you need them, what they should be, and how you can or cannot enforce your house rules. Sean Rocky G, Airbnb Automated, and let's save you some money. Let's jump in. Welcome back, Airbnb family. So a lot has changed, and let's actually start with 2019 because that's where this all began. And end of 2019, there was parties that were thrown and people got shot and killed, and there's a lot of pressure from local and federal entities on getting Airbnb to police their listings better and do a better job. But that quarter, they also lost money. It was the first quarter that I think was ever publicized that they've ever lost money. And that was even before this coronavirus pandemic. So it went from bad to worse to worst. And now we're in the middle of this, where they've just raised $2 billion in debt because they're just hemorrhaging money. And they screwed over hosts on their cancellation policies. And they still didn't do a proper job of giving guests their refunds. So now guests are still upset. They just couldn't win because they did it all wrong, in many hosts' opinion. But that brings us to where we are now. They've spent a lot of time trying to shore up where there was holes punched in their system. For example, the smoking fee. We've been paid our smoking fee plenty of times, even though their policy doesn't allow for a smoking fee to be paid out. I'm going to I'm gonna actually educate you on why they should not pay you for a smoking fee according to their policies. But I'm going to teach you what you can do, and it works every time. Kind of. It's almost like our court system. Judges can make the final call on what's the law, which is so funny because it's written in a book somewhere. Even though Airbnb has terms of service, it's up to interpretation by case managers. So um, with that said, let's begin the lesson. School is in session. Let's start with that. Everything is up to interpretation. A case manager can pretty much look at Airbnb's terms of service and make a decision based on guest testimony, your testimony, and come up to a final decision on what they think the interpretation of their policies are. Well, lately, Airbnb has decided with guests indiscriminately, so hosts have to do a much better job of having proper documentation and, and making sure that our house rules are legitimate and everything is good. Um, everything has to be written perfectly, which is really tough for us, but the bar has been raised for us to be able to collect money from Airbnb. It's much harder to get money out of their host guarantee, etc. So that's why we need to lean on the house rules. And so what are house rules? House rules are a section of your Airbnb listing where before a guest books, they have to read them all. And they are agreeing to everything within the house rules. As long as the house rules don't violate some law or the Airbnb terms of service themselves, the house rules stand, which is cool. You can put fees in house rules, but they don't work the same way that I think you think. Um, you can outline what is cool, what is not cool, and those are enforceable during a guest stay. And you can put fees inside of your house rules that a guest has to pay, but you have to collect those fees before the guest checks in. So it's limited to fees that apply on special circumstances of bookings, like a pet fee. In this case, let's say you have a $100 per night weekly rental or $100 per night rental and a $10 per day pet fee. You could collect a four day pet fee for 40 bucks before the guest checks in. If the guest refuses to pay the pet fee, then you can actually cancel the reservation and they don't get a refund because any guest that violates your house rules um, doesn't qualify for a refund, which is cool. But the problem is, is after a guest checks in, that all goes away. You can no longer enforce a fee because the guest has already checked in. Airbnb can't enforce it. And if you want to make a guest leave your property for a violation of house rules, they get a refund on all days that they have not stayed. So their policy flips. So guests don't get a refund for breaking your house rules if it's before they check in. And um, guests get a refund for unused days if it's after their check in. So this is why a smoking fee is not enforceable because you can't get somebody to pay a smoking fee after they've already checked in. And you can only discover that they're going to be smoking and you can only prove that they smoked after they checked in. So you have to though, there, you still have to talk about smoking in your house rules. What you have to do is you have to say, these are a violation of our house rules and this is something you cannot do. Because you say smoking is not allowed and smoking leaves the home in a condition that is unsuitable for the next guest, it's going to cost money to fix if they do it. You can still list a $200 per day smoking fee and try to make it easy and get paid by Airbnb for the fee because everything's up to interpretation and we still sometimes get paid for these fees even though Airbnb's terms of service say that we shouldn't get paid for them. Cool, we try anyway, 
But then if that doesn't work, we invoice Airbnb and prove that we had to pay a cost to make the home like new again or like in a rentable condition. And so your documentation here is your house rules for smoking have to say that you cannot smoke. Here's the fee. Do you catch them smoking? You need proof like cigarette butts or paraphernalia, something like that. Then with the documentation, you have to file a resolution on that guest before the next guest checks in. You have 14 days to do it, but it has to be before the next guest checks in, and they have been extremely strict on this. If somebody checks out late at 3 p.m. and another guest tries to check in at 3.45 p.m., you had a 45-minute window to do the resolution and actually file it on Airbnb in the resolution center. Extremely strict, but you have to be on top of this. With documentation, get the photo up there and go. From there, you can then show, you can then later show proof of cost. You just have to start the resolution and then you can go and file whatever your costs are, renting an ozone machine, paying housekeepers extra time to remove the smoke smells, et cetera. And you can get paid for this under the host guarantee because they damaged your property. Smoke does count as damage. I'm mold and water certified. The only certification I didn't get that my mentor had was smoke. But I can tell you by like mentoring under this man for nearly a decade, if a home catches on fire in the kitchen, the smoke can damage the other rooms in the property. Smoke does damage property and your insurance would cover that, all the smoke remediation for every room, even if it was a kitchen fire. All right, make sense? Okay, let's move forward. So this is one prime example of why house rules are so important. Because house rules allow you some recourse against a guest if they screw up. So what other things should be in your house rules? Aside from no smoking, you need to list the occupancy limit in your home. You'll say that the home can have up to this many people in it. Any number of people more than this, these people will automatically be vacated for trespassing. And you can have somebody force them to leave. That's one thing you should put in there. You should also put, and I like to put, locals must contact the host before booking. They cannot utilize instant book, but they must contact the host. We've never been able to enforce this, but what this does is it lets us know if somebody actually read our house rules because if a local books without saying that they wanted to make sure it was cool, it shows that they didn't read the house rules and it's already strike one. So we already know to plan for a guest that did not read the house rules. So when we call them, we go over the house rules with them because they did not read them. You need to list an applicable fee schedule. So pet fee, which you have to collect before the check-in. Smoking fee, even though they're not supposed to be able to like charge you for it. An additional cleaning fee for an extremely dirty property is something that Airbnb after the fact will honor. We do it like this. If the home is extremely dirty, after checkout, beyond what a courteous guest would normally leave a home in, and we'll leave examples, um, like if somebody leaves pots and pans in the kitchen sink and an excessive amount of trash and stains the floor or uh, dirties the walls, and the walls have to be treated, these are examples of excessively dirty, then we'll charge them an extra $100 for an excessively dirty home, so that way we can clean it. And Airbnb will pay you for an additional cleaning fee that is in the house rules. It's one of the only things that they can enforce after the fact, apparently. We've never had a problem with that one. The late checkout fee. We put it in there to try to prevent guests from doing bad things. And we also do it to try to be more cool than you technically are allowed to be. See, if a guest checks out even five minutes late, they violated checkout time, you could technically charge them for another day. We say that if you're more than 30 minutes past checkout, we'll charge you a $50 or $75 late checkout fee. If you hold possession of our property for more than two hours, we will charge you for an additional day. And in your house rules, you do need to state that this does not award you possession for the additional day. It is just a penalty for holding possession beyond when you're supposed to because you could negatively affect a future reservation and you're costing us money by having our housekeepers wait around. And so we say that that additional day is the base rate without discounts. So like I said in a very recent previous video, even if you discount your nightly stay to $50 a night because right now this pandemic has people slashing prices, if your base rate for the home is $200 a day, and that's not egregiously inflated like where everybody else's is 75 a day, but your exact same like one bedroom apartment is like say $400 a night. If yours isn't like egregiously crazy, Airbnb will look at it as a reasonable nightly rate and they will award you that one night without discounts if they hold the property an additional day. This will work if they hold the property for multiple days and you have to try to vacate them. The person did book on Airbnb, and as long as they booked only on Airbnb and did not pay you directly for any portion of the stay, then Airbnb 
it was liable to pay you for any nights that they stay. My business rep said, if somebody stays at your home from Airbnb, we have to make sure you get paid. So this is something that they do back up. You can even say that somebody violating any portion of your house rules will be grounds for immediate termination of the reservation without refund. You can state it almost as a preventative measure. I doubt that it's enforceable, but what you need to do is if you're gonna call the police on somebody and try to remove them from the property, you need to prove that their reservation has ended. So you can try to cancel the reservation without giving them a refund through Airbnb, but you could show the house rules terms of service. You'd have to print off the reservation. You'd have to show the reservation length. You'd show the police the house rules and say that any house rules violation is grounds for immediate termination of, of their stay and that you can remove them from the property for a house rules violation. Then you have to show the police that they violated your house rules and say, for this reason, the reservation has been terminated, evict this person or remove this person. You won't, don't want to say evict because they're not really a tenant if they're a short stay. And so now they're trespassing. So you could put that in your house rules, that violations of house rules um, are grounds for um, removal from the property without refund. And if you, you know, violate X, Y, or Z house rules, you shall be considered uh, trespassing immediately upon the violation of those house rules. Also, you should state in your house rules that any guest who books with you must follow all terms of the lease and community policies. You should then like leave all relevant provisions of the lease and community policies inside your house, like on the back of the front door or on the wall. So somebody knows what those policies are. You should also leave a link in your house rules to those policies. Um, you can also then send them a link to those policies after they book as well, just to make sure that they get them because your house rules would be extremely long, maybe even 40 pages. If you try to include your whole lease in the house rules it would be a little bit, um, like, heavy handed. But if, you, if you've seen when you signed up for Airbnb, you click a little box that says, I agree to the terms of service, privacy policies, and content policy. All three are links to like heavy multi-page documents. And it works just the same. We also put in our house rules that only the person that booked is allowed to check in. If somebody's not added to the reservation, they cannot check in. We also add that you agree to all terms of service on Airbnb and remind people that they must have a valid working phone number. If they don't have a working phone number and we attempt to contact them before their reservation, we can remove their reservation without refund for a violation of Airbnb's policy. And so we're reminding people, kind of like preventatively in the house rules, we're trying to prevent bad people from booking, but also give us some citable spot where we can be like, see Mr. or Mrs. Airbnb representative, we told this person in our house rules. Let's say that you have to have a background check done. Some of our buildings require us to do a background check. That needs to be in your house rules. The house rules should state something like this. This building requires anybody staying at the property for no matter what length of time, long-term or short-term, to complete a criminal background check. We're going to provide you a document that the building is going to screen you criminally, and this is going to include the required information. And you need to outline every bit of information that that background check requires. You then, of course, state you need all these information. These are the parties that will have access to the information, and then you need to let them know what you do with the document once it's done, like that the building will keep it on file in a safe or something like that for up to two years, or that the building will destroy it or you'll delete the electronic version of it. You'll need to include this information because if you're going to require a guest to fill out a background check, you need to be completely transparent or otherwise Airbnb could cancel the reservation and penalize you $100 and block your calendar because you violated hosting standards. Because Airbnb cannot require a guest to complete a background check. And if you make somebody do something that they didn't agree to in completion, that's against Airbnb's terms, they can penalize you. But if you cover your bases and state everything transparently, Airbnb can still cancel the guest with full refund, but they can't penalize you for it. And so background checks are very slippery slope, and that's exactly how you do them. We also state that if you have any undeclared guests, there will be an additional charge. So in our pricing strategy, if a home can have 10 people, like a three bedroom, four bedroom house that can house 10 people, we set our rate at like $400 a night or so, and we don't have a charge per guest at three, four, five, six, seven, eight guests. We just charge the $400. But we do put in our pricing that each additional guest past 10 is $40. Even though they can't list for more than 10 people, we still put it in there, even though the cap is 10, because if they show up with 30 people, we want a pricing section and our house rules 
both to support the fact that we're going to charge them $40 per person beyond 10. But if you do it in your house rules the right way and say any undeclared guest will be $40 per night, if they only claim one or two people and they booked it, say $60, like right now, last minute, but they show up with nine people, you can charge them $40 per person for say five, six, or seven people for violating your house rules and bringing undeclared guests. So you have to state that all guests must be declared on the reservation. You need the full names and contact information for any person staying. Any undeclared guests will be considered an additional $40 per day and could still lead to the removal of the reservation if any of these people um, are deemed uh, unsuitable guests by the host or by Airbnb. You always reserve the right to refuse business to anybody. One last thing that I think we put in because lately things have been crazy and people have been trying to defraud Airbnb to get money back. We put in our house rules that if you have a complaint about any aspect of the property, the amenities, cleanliness, or otherwise, Upon addressing this complaint to Airbnb or us, you are authorizing us to come into the property and to solve the problem, fix whatever's broken, or repair the home or make the home clean up to the standards that you require. We do not need permission to access the property if there is something that you deem unsuitable that needs remedy. And so this allows us to show up Show them the house rules. If they try to turn us away, we can then show Airbnb that our house rules say we have the right to enter to fix something that they said was wrong. They turned us away and told us we could not enter. That's a violation of our house rules. Um, and thus, um, if Airbnb wants to battle us and say, well, you need to give a guest a cleaning fee refund because a guest tried to create a problem and wouldn't allow us to solve it, we can then combat that and tell Airbnb, well, they tried to game us to get a refund. They refused to allow us to fix it. We put in our house rules that they're supposed to let us in and we call Airbnb immediately upon the, the moment that they violate the house rules by not letting our housekeepers in. And thus, we proactively open up a ticket saying that this guest is trying to commit fraud um, against us and is likely going to try to seek a refund because they created a problem and they won't let us fix it and that's a violation of our house rules. This allows you to proactively get the jump on the guest for what could be their game on the back end. That's a lot. And you know what? There's plenty more that can go in house rules. Um, you can mention that they have to follow all city state laws, which should be obvious. And you can outline every other reason why somebody can be removed from the property. Um, you can also state we had an issue with um, a guest who like they brought an undo undocumented guest that they claimed was his like was her husband and he was violent and we've had the hardest time removing this person and our house rules um, were outdated and this is of course caused us a problem. We want to reserve the right to be able to remove anybody who's not a declared um, Airbnb user. And Airbnb has not been able to help us enforce this. So if we would have just put on our house rules that every person staying in our property has to have an Airbnb um, like app and has to have gone through Airbnb screening and has to be authorized and declared on the reservation, then we would have been good to go um, because we could have then canceled that person's reservation without refund. Um, because they, of course, are smuggling somebody in and that person won't leave. And then we could have had something to give the police to have them removed. We've been battling that for like a week and a half. We've not, this person's reservation is like for a month. Um, and we haven't been able to, for like since the first week, been able to remove this extra person. It's been, it's been crazy. So we are still learning and growing and adding and changing things to our house rules because this is a constantly changing landscape. Um, if you have favorite house rules that you want to give to the Airbnb house community, put them in the comments. Um, it's important to be comprehensive. You want to make sure you're concise. You don't want to write a complete book because if somebody sees like a 14 page house rule section, they may not book with you. So it's important to like really distill down the main points of what people need to know about your property and what you really think you need to be prepared for and prepared to enforce. So get in the comments, look at everybody else's house rules, take these ones and put together your best, your best one pager, you could say. Um, I wish you well. Um, stay safe out there. Hopefully your guests don't drive you crazy where you need all these house rules, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right? So thank you for watching Airbnb Automated and I will see you on the other side. Hi.